Welcome back. In this video, we will be creating this picture right here in Python. Now, what we can see is a pretty cool piece of art where we have a bunch of squares that are stacked into one another and they are offset a little. And this makes for this cool impression of it almost having a 3D effect, even though it's really just a bunch of squares that are stacked into another. Now, anyway, this picture or the idea for this picture is actually pretty old. It was published in a computer magazine called Computer Graphics and Art. Now, judging from the cover, this is pretty old. And if you look closely at the bottom right, you can see that this is from 1976. And even though this was called Computer Graphics and Art, the world, if we just have a look at the editorial, was still pretty much stuck in the typewriter age, right? Anyway, if we um, scroll down a little to page 28 of that journal issue, there is this section on the University of Munich and then West Germany and some of the art that they have created using computers. And there's our picture that we are now going to recreate in Python. Let's hop on over to our editor. Okay, I am now in my editor. I have created a new script called nested underscore squares. And in this, I have this skeleton script ready, which I copied over from our previous project. So right now we are just importing turtle and the random module. And then we have set the width of the stroke width. So this is really just how thick the lines will be drawn. We've said that we don't want to have the turtle object flying around. We just want to have the final result and we achieve that using tracer false. And this is now where our code will go. And then we have tracer true, which reactivates everything in a way. And then we just say exit on click so that we can exit out of this. Now, if I run this right now, this is just an empty canvas. And now it's our job to fill that with life. And there's just one more thing that I'll do. I'll just say setup. I'm going to make this a little larger, 1000, 1000. There we go. So yeah, let's get started. Now, the first thing that we'll need is some kind of function that we can use to draw a little square. So I'm just going to call this draw square. I don't know if the turtle module has anything like that, but it's so simple to create this yourself. So just think of this as a little exercise. Now a square, well, we're going to have a location, a X and Y location of where we want this square to appear on the screen. And then we have to specify the size of that square. Now, when drawing a square, we could think of the X and Y coordinates either as a particular corner of that square or the center around which we are drawing. And here I'm going to go for this second option, which is the center. So X and Y will be the center of the square. And now we are drawing around that. So let's first lift up our pen and go to one of the corners. And I'm going to go to the bottom left corner. So I'm going to say X minus and now as half, I'm subtracting from the center half of how wide that square is going to be. And I'm going to do the same thing with um, Y, which will then move us from X, Y to, or from wherever we are on the canvas right now, to the bottom left corner of that square that we are about to draw around X and Y. Now, once we've gone there, we're going to put down our pen because now we want to start drawing. And now, well, we have to draw four edges, four sides, four now four edges of that square. So we'll just say for i in range four, let's draw this. So we'll say the turtle, that is our little drawing robot, now has to move forward in, well, the first direction, so to speak. So forward and by how much? So we can use the forward function together with an argument that specifies how far we're going. Well, edge size is s, so we're moving by s many pixels or whatever unit the turtle uses over to the right. And then we got to make a turn. So now we'll make a, a left turn because now we want to go up in the next step. And well, here we just have to say how many degrees we are turning up or well, we're turning left from the point of view of the turtle. So we are moving, we are turning left by 90 degrees. And if we do that four times, then we should have drawn a square. And now let's see if that works. So here I'm now going to use our new function draw a square. Well, we'll start with the origin and make it of size 100. Let's run this. And there we go. We have just drawn a little square onto our screen, onto our screen, onto our canvas. Let's see if we can make this bigger. Let's make this 300. Yep, this is a lot bigger. Let's see if we can move it around. Let's move it up. 
It's now moved up. Let's bring it back down and a little to the left. So yeah, that is working. We have a fully functioning method to draw squares onto the screen. Okay, so now, now, now what do we do next? Well, we don't have one square, but many squares and they are arranged in a grid. So what we'll do is we'll have a nested loop. So we have a loop over all the X coordinates and all the Y coordinates. And we have to specify how large this, this grid is or like how large the outermost squares of each set of squares will be. And I'm just gonna call that size. And let's just set this not to 1000, but 100. And now we'll have a loop. So for X in range, well, our, our canvas is of size 1000, 1000. So we could start at minus 500, but bear in mind that we are specifying the center points of each square, which is what we did up here, remember? S half and S half are subtracted. So we are not starting at minus 500, but we are indenting this by size half. And I got to use an integer division here. So this is the double slash operator. And now we're going all the way over to 500. Now we could subtract from this the size again, but it, I don't think it matters all that much. And now we got to specify by how much we're moving. We're moving by size. And I'm just going to copy paste this line, indent this, make this Y. And now we should be looping over all of the um, different x, y coordinates of our grid. So let's change this to x and y and size. And let's see what happens. Let's run this. And there we go. We have just drawn a grid. Awesome. So now that we have this grid, the next step is to draw the inner squares of each set of squares. So this is just the outermost squares of each set. And now we have to fill this with life, but you know, what really makes the art interesting. Now, how do we do that? Well, remember how the squares are not perfectly symmetrical, how they like offset a little in either direction. And okay, this is what we'll do now. So first let's add a comment here, draw the outer square draw the outer square. Now comes um, the interesting part. We have to choose or well, determine um, the offsets. I'm going to call it the offsets. There is an X offset and a Y offset. And here I'll just say X off and Y off. Now these two offsets will be determined randomly. So we'll just say random and I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this a uniform distribution for both of them. And we'll just say that there is some noise parameter which we'll specify up here. For now, I'm just gonna set it to five. And then we'll say from minus noise to noise, the same down here. So from minus five to five, it's gonna draw a random number. And by this much, it's gonna be shifting around um, the squares inside their outermost boxes, so to speak. And then we'll say, now it's time to draw the inner squares. Now, how many squares do we want to draw? I think we're going to go with six. So for I in range six, well, we'll say draw a square. And now we'll say X plus I times the offset, X off. And then we have Y plus I times our Y offset. And let's just put in size and you will see what the problem will be with this in a second. Let's run this. And there we go. Now this is interesting art, right? Uh, it's pretty cool. So we can see how this offset thing works. It's giving us this 3D like illusion. So we can really see how this works and how it's, you know, anything but symmetrical. But we wanted this, um, we wanted the inner squares to be actually within the outer square. And the problem now is that they are of the same size, but just shifted over. So they're obviously going to go out of bounds. And the, the way that we can fix this is by shrinking them. So let's introduce another variable up here, which I'm going to call shrink, <laughs> not related to psychology. And this will just be a number that determines by how much we're going to shrink it. Now, if at most we're offsetting it by five, we want to make sure that the shrinkage is um, large enough so that it, even if it's, you know, plus five or minus five in terms of what we're offsetting, that we are still within the box. And 15 will do that justice, I believe. So now the size is going to be shrinking for these inner squares. And here we'll just say size minus I times the shrinkage factor. 
Uh, let's run this again. And there we go. Now we have recreated that art. I think the line width is a little bit too too much. It's a little too thick. We can easily fix this. Let's, um, where is that? Um, width, let's set this to two. Run this again, and there we go. And now it's looking a lot more like what we saw before with the original artwork. And I think this is it. We can now rerun this. And every time that we run this, it's going to draw a new picture. And since, well, we are drawing from a uniform distribution, and since we have a bunch of random offsets here, there is, well, trillions of possibilities of what this image could look like, depending on how many you know, decimals your computer can process and how many pixels you have on your screen and everything. Anyway, every time that you rerun this, you're looking at a different piece of art. And I think this is amazing. It's a pretty simple idea. And we just implemented this in Python. Now, before we head off to the next video, let's take care of, you know, colors and the background and all of these things because I think it would be kind of nice to have a separate script where we store all of these parameters in a function. And then later on, we don't have to, you know, go through setup with high turtle tracer and all of these things. So it would be nice to store all of that in a separate script and then only change those bits and pieces that we have to change for whatever piece of art we're working on. So now I'm gonna open a new script and I think I'm just going to call it theme.py. So I've just named it theme.py. And well, in this script, we're also importing the turtle module. And now we are defining our function. I'm going to call it set theme. And there will be a bunch of parameters. There is the canvas width, which we'll initialize to 1000. Then there is, then there is the canvas height, also 1000. And then we'll have a canvas color. Now, how do we specify a color? A color is specified as a bunch of values between zero and one. And here I just picked some values and I, I picked these values on the more common zero to 255 scale. So I'm just gonna say 232 divided by 255. And then this scales that value of 232 to you know the interval that we need. So now 210 over 255 for the RG, that's the green value. And now the blue value also 210 divided by 255. So the background will be slightly reddish, but it's mostly just, you know, a, a grayscale color, but it's not perfectly grayscale. Then we'll specify a pen color. So here I'm gonna go with 94 over 255, and then we'll say, 71 over 255. Now we go with 69 over 255. And that's the pen color. Now comes the, the width of how thick the individual strokes will be. We'll call this simply thickness. We'll set this to one. Now we have to specify how quickly the robot is drawing. And if we set this to zero, it's drawing at the highest speed possible. And then we'll have the tracer thing, which was whether at all we're even seeing the robot moving around or whether we are just looking at the final result. And here I'm just gonna call this tracer value. I'm gonna set that to false. That means we are not gonna be looking at it because we are only looking at the, at the final result. And then lastly, we'll have a, another Boolean, which is just to, you know, whether or not we are gonna be watching the turtle do the drawing. And obviously we're gonna set that to false. And well, once we've defined all of that, I know that this is a lot. I'm gonna indent this. I don't know what proper, I think most people now actually put it up here. And now down here, I'm gonna be making use of all of these parameters that we just defined. So let's use setup and let's set this to canvas width and canvas height. So later on, this is this command, which we now won't need anymore. Once we've done that, we can set the background color using BG color, and we'll set that, set that to our canvas color. Then comes color for our pen. That is just the pen color, and we use the color function. Then width, you've seen that before. Let's set this to thickness. Now comes speed, which we'll set to the speed value. Now comes the tracer, which we'll set to the tracer value. 
And then lastly, if the user wants to hide the turtle, so if hide underscore turtle, in that case, we'll use hide turtle. All right, let's save this, go into our nested squares function, and let's import this. So um, from theme, import set theme. Well, just like this, and now, up here, we'll just say set theme. And yeah, let's see whether that works. I'm gonna run this and there we go. Unfortunately, there is still this little turtle thing. Now, why is that the case? Um, high turtle should be true, <laughs> obvious mistake. So let's go back into our nested squares and there we go. Now this is the image and now we can just change any of these parameters. We could change everything back to what it would look like in the default version, but I like it that we can now, you know, just type something like, oh, make this a little thicker. So thickness is equal to five, run this again. There we go. This is obviously too much. So let's maybe go for two. There we go. We can now control this and yeah, I like this a lot. So just for the sake of completeness, I'm now gonna go into our tiling script and import that here as well. So, We'll now use that same import statement. Go into here from theme import set theme. We can get rid of that. So right down here, we can get rid of all of that and just say set theme with a line thickness of three. We run this and there we go. We have our image. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it a lot. We have recreated an actual piece of art that got published in a computer science, well, not science, computer arts journal. And see you in the next video with another piece of art.